Anthony, I have to ask you, what do you feel when you look at Sir Ken Clark there, now no longer a member of the Conservatives and sitting really on Conservative? Really sad. Really, really sad. I think Ken Clark has been an excellent um, well, addition to the House for many, many years. He's the father of the House. Um, I fully support what he says. I mean, he's, he's voted for the deal three times. Um, he's tried to do the right thing. He's tried to honour the result of the referendum. He's tried to protect, you know, do it in an orderly way. And, you know, he really is a, a fantastic colleague. And, I, you know, we had a debate today, and I think it was Sir Nicholas Soames as well, um, and, you know, Alistair Burt, and it actually brought uh, tears to mine and many people's eyes. So why they aren't you joining? They're still Tory them. party members, by the way. They, they are only have the Conservative whip party. Yes, they they've had the whip, yeah. whip removed. Yes. But, but why aren't you joining him in terms of voting against the government when you say you fully support him? Because so we've all done the same thing in terms of supporting a deal. Unfortunately, not enough people have done that. When it comes to no deal, what I've always said to people is there are massive consequences of no deal, and is it really worth because 30 MPs of any colour? have not backed this agreement that we as a parliament would inflict all that damage on millions of people, on thousands of businesses. And I don't think it is, which is why many colleagues have been calling to bring uh, an agreement back, because I think they know that we could possibly now get something through. I think timing is everything. And what they've done at the moment, I, don't, I think they need to give the prime minister, he's a new prime minister, he needs to have time. And he needs to have time, you know, till the Council of Europe at least, but you see, to see if we can get a deal. The EU Commissioner saying there are no new um, suggestions being offered. Philip Lambert said today suggestions from the government that negotiations were ongoing and doing well was frankly, if pardon my language, BS. Well, the, what happens, what's the difference between a business negotiation, which I've done loads of, and a, and a political negotiation, is all the positioning and signalling is done via the media um, across the channel, across the airwaves. And therefore, they would, wouldn't they? They always do. And actually, it is a game. And of course, Boris is doing the same back to them, right? Leila Moran, you should give Boris Johnson and the government some time on this. I don't. No, Boris Johnson is already proving to be one of the most inept prime ministers we've ever had. His very first vote in the House he has lost. I've never trusted a word that comes out of that man's mouth. And what we have to remember that we're doing here today is taking no deal off the table. He's now offering a general election, yet that prime minister is the one who sets the date. He says October the 14th. It already changed to 15th. What will you achieve if this bill goes through, apart from another delay? Uh, it has, well, at least it's a delay and not no deal. And we have been clear. We do want to delay and we're upfront about it. We want a people's vote as a result of that delay. So I'm absolutely delighted tonight that the amendment I supported alongside Stephen Kinnock and others actually was successful because it amended the Hillary Benn bill, which means that actually instead of as it stood in its form under Hillary Benn, that we have an extension with no purpose, we now have, you can only have the extension if you attach it to getting a deal. I personally Did it pass by mistake or was it a ruse on behalf of the government? Well, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we went forward, we did what we needed to do, and a win is a win. But it's still this, to get to the Lords. Hang on Sorry, a second. I'll point out. But what it, showed, to to what it showed, what it showed, unlike the unelected Lords, the elected Chamber of the House of Commons has approved an oh, amendment. Well, by accident. To be well, honest, I, went through, I went through that lobby as well. I went through the lobby as well with Caroline to vote for that amendment. We had a free vote. Yeah. The Conservatives yeah, had a free vote. You're talking about bringing back a withdrawal agreement no, that was rejected no, by no, the House three no, times. That's not. Well, Leila Moran thinks so. Well, three times. Well, let's just say. The second referendum. She's never going to vote for anything. That, look, that no lobby to defeat that amendment was also full. Gillian says you're never well, going to vote for anything. No. We will vote. We actually have said up front we will vote for the withdrawal agreement if it's put back to the people with the option to remain. Well, the people want this sorted. And part of the trust tonight is whether we we can trust the Prime Minister, and that's where there is a test of that yes, trust. But hang on, Jackie, hang on, Jackie. It's what I'm going to come to that is whether the tr Prime Minister can win people's trust to not just not work for a deal, but also the other side of that. As many people on my side, on the Labour side, have said clearly they're not prepared to vote for any deal. Now, there are and enough many of people us. will argue that Labour's position, their inability to settle on a, on a, a, a credible position, is why we're well, in Labour's this chaos. Well, well, no, I think there's a lot of people we can look at who are, I would say hardline Brexiteers and hardline Remainers across the House have frustrated our efforts to re respect the referendum result and get a deal. And tonight has shown that actually we were hearing more voices across the House who actually want to sort this mess out. And our, amended, our amendment to the Hillary Benn thing has changed the game now. 
Layla's not happy about Layla, it. Layla, do you know who said that? Layla Moran. We'll see. Let's see if it gets through the Lords. And frankly, if it does come back, then people will have vote, potentially vote on Theresa May's deal a fourth time. We'll have a see. We'll see. Well, if, well let's see. Because if it changes the game, where does that leave I'm the Lib Dems? Sure, I'm not sure it does change the game at all. Let's see what happens. I think there's enough people, personally. I've always felt that there's enough people, once the party political games were out of the way, once and there was leadership games on our side, I'll accept that, and we have people who've never voted for it on our side, but there are enough people in the House of Commons who have read this in great detail, who have spoken to constituents, who have spoken to businesses, who would do the sensible thing. Enough and the deal, this deal is actually what people was amended. Who don't think it's Theresa May's withdrawal it is, agreement. It is, it is Jackie, as amended well, we, by 10, 10 things that was, was negotiated. So no, Jackie, the look, we never, we never got the chance to actually vote on the withdrawal agreement bill because obviously Theresa May departed and that was, a, to be honest, the people responsible for that, the people on the Tory side, to be honest, including my own party. The reason why we have Boris Johnson today is because people on a second referendum refuse to even think about a deal. But the, yeah. hang on, let me, can I just finish the point? Can I just finish the point? We are not saying, and it's very clear from our, our amendments and the folks that have gone aside, we're not expecting that, that a deal will come back to be a repertory space. But what we do know is, and we have to be grown up about this, many of the elements that were agreed about supporting the EU nationals, about some of the areas about protecting what we've already got in the environment, there is cross-party agreement. So elements of the Theresa May withdrawal agreement will no, form the final. Work. And so in the end, census, and in the end Boris Johnson's here. deal or Theresa May's deal may well get through on the back of Labour votes. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that would annihilate the Labour Party at a general election. And actually, I think more likely than not, the only thing that's going to get us out of this mess is bringing that deal, whatever it is, to the people with the option to remain. If that's was still going to be the only you may well find, you? You, we are very clear, we want to stop and Brexit, and you may well need our votes to get what you want to, so let's see where this goes. The second referendum is a really bad idea without implementing the first, and I think both of us agree on that. It's very difficult to sell. This has been the most divisive issue across our country. It will just ignite it all again. And I even have to worse. Ask you all about the prospect of an election. Is it further away or closer now? Oh, well, I think... Um, Goodness, I don't think we should rule out anything happening uh, in the next 72 hours that will change the course of a general election. If the Prime Minister, whatever Prime Minister was, really wants one, they can find one. Leila Moran, further or closer? I think we're probably closer at this point, but nothing's guaranteed. We've got a working majority of minus something now, so um, I think unless we can resolve that, get over Brexit and then get to policies which are much, much less controversial, then it could happen very quickly. Um, we have, well, you know, a working majority is not... Uh, you uh, minor minor something. ...getting to policies that are much less controversial, but thank you very much for <laughs> talking to me today. Okay,